Hey, if you like this video, uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell, uh, just like this. Better we don't talk about it. And then here we don't even say his name. It's one of the rules, Ray. We only refer to him by his code name. What code name? Kingpin. All right, all right, all right. So uh, this week I'm gonna continue uh, my Kingpin uh, series of videos. I uh, already went over the statue, the figure, uh, the display. And today I'm gonna go more like uh, in depth uh, on the comic book uh, itself. Uh, it's the first appearance of a kingpin, and um, I'll mention a couple of uh, interesting facts uh, in this book uh, about the kingpin that you may or may not know. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, as you can see, the one on the right is Amazing Spider-Man 50, which is the first appearance of the kingpin. Uh, it also features the uh, origin story uh, retold. Uh, and all the way to the left is my uh, actually favorite, I have to say. It's Amazing Spider-Man 51. Uh, I mean, as far as Kingpin first, uh, it is the first cover appearance. Uh, as you can see, uh, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 50, there's no mention of the Kingpin on the cover or anything. Uh, but 51 is the first appearance uh, on the cover. Uh, it's pretty cool and it's officially the second appearance of him. And uh, the one in the middle, Amazing Spider-Man 52. Uh, it's there because it's pretty cool as well. <laughs> um, but it's part of the story. I mean, all those three kind of uh, are related. Uh, so they're pretty cool. I'll, I'll go more in depth. Um, as, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 50 and 51. 52, not so much. Because that's not really a first uh, for the Kingpin in there. Uh, so I'll, I'll go over it. Uh, I hope you like it. Uh, it's pretty cool books. Uh, 9.0, 9.4, 9.8. Uh, it's probably as high grade I'll ever get anyway. So, well, we'll see. Uh, thank you. Wilson Fisk. All right. So now I'll go over uh, uh, Spider-Man 50, uh, the one you see uh, all the way to the right. Uh, that's the first appearance of uh, the Kingpin, uh, Wilson Fisk. Uh, I mean, he's identified as both there. Um, it's pretty cool cover. Uh, it's one of the more recognizable uh, Spider-Man covers. Um, it's really nice. It's also the first appearance of uh, Flint, uh, you know, uh, Kingpin's uh, right-hand man. And there's a couple other firsts there, uh, Johnny Carson. Um, there's a couple more people. Uh, I'll, I'll put the information on, on the side here so you can see. Uh, it's the first appearance of uh, the King, I guess, his weapon in uh, his penthouse. Um, Technically, it's their first appearance, too. Uh, I mean, as, as, as much as he's uh, popular now, uh, at the time, I guess, on this first appearance, there was not much about him on the cover, as you can see. Um, I mean, this, this version, is, this book, uh, it's more about uh, the story. And it starts with, uh, you know, this robbery. And basically, you know, they're trying to, I guess, rob uh, this payroll truck. And then Spider-Man's fighting this, this gang. And, I mean, he's doing what he usually does, right? Um, but then, uh, you know, at the end, you know, he's able to, I guess, you know, capture those guys, the bad guys. Uh, but one of the bystanders kind of get upset. You know about the all the violence and everything, and he's one of the guys that kind of been believing what uh Jameson you know been putting on the newspaper, 
uh, then uh, it goes back to uh, you know uh, him going to uh, his apartment uh, when uh, Harry tells him hey uh, your aunt is is not feeling well uh, so he goes there you know see her but he started feeling guilty and which is the whole point of the story I guess you know he started regretting uh, being spider-man so he goes see him oh see her and um, and he has trouble in school as well you know uh, uh, he has a big test and he's not able to study for it um, so the whole thing starts to build up and then he goes back to his apartment and then you know, his apartment he turns on the TV and all he hears is, you know, it's how bad Spider-Man is and he sees Jameson there. Um, and then uh, he starts getting really stressed out about the whole thing. Uh, he gets uh, very uh, overwhelmed and he decides to go for a walk. And there he just decides to throw his costume away and gives up being Spider-Man. So that's why you see Spider-Man no more right on the cover. Uh, then the next day, uh, you know, the kid finds the the costume, brings me, uh, brings it to Jameson, and you know he's delighted, and he goes on TV about it. He puts on the newspaper that, you know, basically Spider-Man is done, it's all over. Uh, but part of the story too, it's about it, now it becomes more about a uh, kingpin and the mafia, I guess, getting together. Uh, now the people start hearing that. Okay, uh, you know, Spider-Man is gone, uh, you know, um, well, uh, let's start our crime spree, I guess. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, so the crime starts going up in the city. Uh, the Kingpin uh, comes up with his master plan, you know, to gather all the, the leaders. Um and that's a you see on, on this one. It's the first time you you see his face as well. Uh, first couple of times you see him from like behind, but then you see his face. Um, and then he goes back to Peter. You know, you know, after he gives up everything, he kind of uh, carefree, and uh, you know, even though other people start getting worried, like Harry gets worried about the crime in the city. Peter kind of stays out of it until one time he's, you know, going home uh, and then uh, he sees, you know, a crime being committed and he has to kind of interfere. And that brings back memories, you know, from what happened to his uncle. And uh, he starts to rethink this whole <laughs> Spider-Man no more uh, idea. So, um, you know, uh, but then Foswell, um, he goes back and he tries to tell Kingpin, hey, you know, I want to be the leader of this whole thing. And it doesn't really work out. Kingpin uh, kind of ties him up and say, oh, no, I, I, I'm the guy now. <laughs> um, and, and then uh, after he rethinks everything, you know, he decides, okay, you know, after... You know, he has those memories from Uncle Ben. Uh, he decides to go back and, and, and be Spider-Man uh, again. And that's how it basically ends uh, the story. Um, again, this one, even though it has the first appearance of uh, Kingpin, I, I feel like it's more centered on, on the story about Spider-Man no more. And then Kingpin is just part of the story on the first one. That's basically why you don't really see him on the cover uh, but then it continues on, on this book here all the way to the left uh, Amazing Spider-Man 51 and uh, on 51 which is the first cover uh, you, now you can see like in the clutches of the Kingpin right there on the cover so people already know the Kingpin and he's more part of you know center of the story so I'll, I'll go over it uh, quickly uh, on this one as well so you can see how he looked like and how the story went um, I'll just take a quick break here and uh, readjust it for you my name is Wilson Fisk uh, 
All right, all right, all right. So uh, I'm gonna continue here. I had to adjust the comics a little bit so you can see uh, the other comic. Um, so yeah, uh, this is Amazing Spider-Man 51. Uh, I'm gonna go over it quickly and uh, you know mention a couple of things that you may not know about, a couple of interesting facts about it. Uh, that's pretty cool about this book. Um, I guess the first one is that you know this, like I mentioned before, is the first cover Kingpin. Um, that, that's pretty cool. Um, and I got it 9.4, so it's kind of a, a, a difficult grade to get, and especially on those darker covers, a very high grade, so I'm pretty lucky to get it. So, um, yeah, going back here, so there's uh, uh, some uh, first appearances. Um, well, it's the second appearance of Kingpin, where it's the first appearance of him on the cover. Is also the first appearance of uh, Joe Robertson. Uh, even though they don't mention him by name, you know, he does appear there. Um, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, there's several kind of other minor, uh, minor uh, first appearances, like the Big Turk, um, Shorty and Blinker, which is like, you know, Kingpin's uh, henchman. Um, this is also the first time... Uh, his cane is broken. That's, a, I guess, another interesting fact. And this is the first time also that they fight. Uh, you know, it's the first time you see a fight between uh, the Kingpin and Spider-Man. Uh, even though they're both, right, on Spider-Man 50, they don't actually fight uh, each other. Uh, so that, that's pretty cool. Uh, so going back here... Um, so uh, Spider-Man 51 kind of continues uh, what 50 kind of ended. Uh, Spider-Man was gone, but then at the very end he comes back. But on 51, you know, the bad guys are still unaware that Spider-Man made his comeback. And so Kingpin wants to continue his plan to kind of take over the, the city, uh, continue with his crime spree, I guess. So he, he moves his plan forward. Uh, but one of the things that he's thinking about because uh, he reads on the newspaper a lot, you know, about him and stuff going on from Jameson. And he kind of wants to keep him quiet. <laughs> he doesn't like uh, what he sees on the newspaper. And part of his plan is to, I guess, silence uh, Jameson. Um, he also kind of give his guys some kind of uh, side jobs. Uh, one of them is like, uh, you know, to go to those uh, service stations. Uh, I guess to collect or whatever. I'll put some pictures here so you can kind of follow the story a little bit. And when they're doing that, they're surprised when uh, Spider-Man shows up and then uh, you know, the fight breaks out. Uh, they're not really expecting, you know, Spider-Man to come back and they fight them off. Uh, but they, they're kind of able to get away with it. Uh, and then um, in the meantime, uh, meanwhile, you know, Foswell, who kind of tried to take over before, kind of approaches Kingpin again, kind of in a situation, hey, if I cannot beat you, uh, let me join you, kind of situation. Uh, so he tries to join Kingpin. Kingpin kind of says, no, no, I have other plans for you. Uh, so he kind of, you know, plans something else for Forswell, which is going to kind of use him uh, basically to kidnap uh, Jameson. Uh, but at that same time they're talking, you know, Big Turk uh, comes back all upset, you know, thinking, I guess, uh, Kingpin set him up or something. Uh, he tries to fight, you know, the Kingpin. Um, it doesn't really work out. <laughs> uh, Kingpin beats him quickly, you know, and basically it's over. Uh, but then uh, the story goes back to, to the Daily Bugle when uh, Spider-Man kind of comes back you know, and say, hey, I, I want to come back to my job, my old job. At first, Jameson is like, no, no, try to kind of play hardball, right? Uh, but then he decides to, okay, if I have some pictures of Spider-Man, he ends up hiring him back. Um, then he continues, uh, Spider-Man is in the city, he spider sense, uh, sense something going on in a club, and he goes to the club, he finds the, you know, Kingpin's uh, henchman there, um, again, another fight breaks out as usual. The guy has a grenade or something. 
uh, the whole thing explodes, but he's able to put a tracker on one of the bad guys so he can track one of the bad guys. And uh, you know, at the same time, I guess, uh, they're successful uh, kidnapping Jameson uh, and take him to the you know, Kingpin's uh, headquarters. Uh, and then Jameson is there, you know, wondering, hey, why, why did you kidnap me? And, uh, and then he finds out that Foswell was in, you know, that, you know kind of betrayed him. So he, he realized that, he gets upset, and then Spider-Man, using his tracker, is able to, you know, find, uh, you know, Kingpin's uh, place there where he's kind of hiding Jameson, I guess. You can say hiding. Um, and he, you know, fights the, the, I guess, the henchman, right, uh, quickly. You know, it's a pretty easy fight for Spider-Man. But then... Uh, you know, Kingpin is like, oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to get you. So there's a fight, and this is the first fight in which, uh, like I mentioned, it's the first time the Kingpin's uh, cane uh, breaks. And they fight, and it's pretty cool. Uh, there's a couple pages just for the fight. Um, so, but during the fight, Kingpin kind of uh, gains the upper hand. Um, and he uses the, the gas thing that he has like on his tie, on his diamond necktie or something. And he was able to knock out the uh, Spider-Man, uh, who's, you know, doesn't look too good now. And that's basically how he ends. <laughs> uh, Spider-Man is down, Jameson, you know, still they're kidnapped, you know, uh, being held, I guess, hostage by the Kingpin. And that's how he ends, and that's how the other one, uh, 52, kind of starts, you know, Kingpin, kind of with uh, uh, Jameson and Spider-Man, you know, capture, I guess. And that's the, the one that says, uh, next to die a hero. So it's pretty cool. Uh, uh, I'm not going to go over 52, but it's a pretty cool book as well, and kind of continues the story. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's about it. Uh, all three books are really cool. Uh, I hope you like this. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, just let me know if you know any other interesting facts about this one. And I'll see you uh, on the next video. Um, thank you.